In this video, we're gonna be talking about some puppy training first steps, and joining us is this adorable Sheltie puppy named Fizz. Now, whether you're trying to be as prepared as you can to bring your puppy home, or maybe you're already feeling a little bit overwhelmed with your puppy training, this video will give you lots of tips and hopefully some answers to all of your puppy training questions. I'm Ken Steep, and welcome back to McCann Dogs. Here at McCann Dogs, we've helped more than 90,000 dog owners to overcome their dog training challenges. So if this is your first time on the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button so that I can help you to have a well-behaved four-legged family member. Now, Lori, uh, I want to introduce everyone to Fizz. This is your new uh, puppy, and let's talk a little bit about Fizz and, and sort of um, the other breeds that you've had, other breeds of dog, because I, I asked you, um, uh, you know, if you wanted to do a video all about small breed puppy training, and you mentioned that Fizz is actually your largest small breed dog. He, he's huge. Yes. yes. My <laughs> other dog is um, is a papillon, and he's actually a small papillon. So yeah. he, as an adult, weighs five pounds. Um, so yeah, this is this is my my big small dog. Yeah. Now you also do uh, teach our new puppy seminars, and I thought it would be great to chat with our audience today about um, some of their puppy training first steps, and maybe some of the things that you talk about in those new puppy seminars, so that uh, those uh, small breed dog owners can really get their puppy started off on the right foot. There's definitely some things that are more specific to smaller breeds, and. When I was thinking about this, expectations, I think, is one thing that comes to mind. Some people look at a small dog and they go, oh, well, um, it's not really a bother. I won't put the same effort into training it because if it puts its feet up on me, it's not a big deal. Or if mm -hmm. it bites me, it doesn't hurt. So sometimes people um, don't train to the same standards that they might with a, a larger dog. Um, and I've had um, smaller dogs, and I've also had like St. Bernard's. Yep. Um, and you know, you, you wanna make sure your St. Bernard doesn't put their feet up on you, but I also like to make sure that I train my very small dogs to those same standards. So um, I don't want a little tiny dog putting their feet on me, because I still think their feet should be on the floor. Sure, great for leadership. Yes, yeah. absolutely, and, and just well-mannered. And I think it's important, or I often feel with a small dog, you need to be a really good ambassador for those small dogs because, you know, sometimes people look at um, my small dog, not my, not my big small dog, but my, my real small dog, yes. uh, and, and go, oh, um, well, I'm, I'm surprised. I thought small dogs were yappy and they bit, and right. it's like, well, my gosh, no. Yeah. No, not, not as a rule. Yeah. So you really want to make sure that you get out there and have your small dog really well behave so that uh, people can not view them that way. Yeah, and I think a really important takeaway for any dog owner is to have expectations. It's so funny as we have students in our classes here and they just don't really know what they can expect of their dog, but to have the same expectations of your small dog, uh, small breed dog, uh, as you do uh, any large breed dog is really, really important. Even though they're, uh, they may, you may feel like you're more comfortable letting them get away with things, some of those um, non-confrontational leadership things like, you know, not allowing them to jump up on you or uh, not allowing them to jump up on the furniture can really, uh, you know, speed up your training if you're clear with them. And if you're consistent with them, the same way you would be uh, with your Great Dane puppy. Absolutely, and, and consistency, that, that's really the magic word there, consistency. Um, that is uh, really one of the cornerstones of dog training. And I think um, one of the most important things that people should keep in mind when they come home with these eight-week-old puppies, seven-week-old puppies, wh whatever the age is, they hit the ground running. They're mm -hmm. ready. They're learning. Yeah. Um, so you want to make sure that you're not rehearsing behavior that you don't want long-term and that you start training them right away. Yeah. So um, when I uh, brought Fizz in, like literally into my living room, there was um, a couple of dog toys on the floor and a pair of fluffy slippers. And you know, your initial impulse is to move those fluffy slippers because the dog's attracted to them. Yep. Um, and I didn't, and mm -hmm. I don't. It's, it's, it's at, at, she was just shy of eight weeks and um, I had him on a line so I had good control over him and right away I'm right there and it's like, leave that. Yep. That's not for puppies and I direct him to a toy. Great. And he figured that out right away. They're yeah. extraordinarily bright yep. and he knows like fluffy slippers, not for dog. 
dog toy for dogs. You talked a little bit about using a house line. Now we have a video on the channel, but tell us a little bit about um, the importance of using a house line with your puppy, whether they're a small breed dog or the largest of large breed dogs, the benefits of using something like a house line and maybe even what a house line is. Yeah, a house line basically is, is a leash uh, that you would attach to your dog. Often it doesn't have a handle on it, so it doesn't snag on furniture, but um, it's, it's, an, it's really a, another magic trick with dog training. Um, and what it enables you to do is have control over your dog without being sort of invasive or overpowering. So when you want that dog, um, you just step on that line. Yep. If you want to stop them from heading over to the fluffy slipper, you yep. can stop it before it happens um, and you have better control. And we always try and make sure that you have a good relationship with your dog and their collar. So, you know, if you want to stop your dog and you're forever reaching in and grabbing their collar, they learn to become, um, to get out of the way. Yep. or collar shy, whatever you want to call yep. it. Um, they look like a severely abused dog when you, when you do that, yeah. but typically they're just trying to get out of the way. Right. So it avoids all of that, um, and it, it, it gives you good leadership qualities because trying to run after a puppy doesn't make you look like a leader. It's amusing to everybody else in your household because right. typically you don't win anyway. Right, so, yes, the puppy's too um, quick. This gives you really, really good control, mm -hmm. and you can stop behaviors before they happen. Yeah, if we could quickly talk about how you might um, build some value for your puppy allowing you to take their collar, um, you know, what you would do to sort of teach the puppy that it's a great thing when I take your collar? Um, well, one, one way is food, a food reward, if you take their collar and you give them food. Um, but food and small dogs actually are a bit of an issue if you want to touch on that right sure, now. Sure, yeah. Um, with, you know, if you have an, um, you know, a 15 pound lab puppy, uh, you know, you can get a lot of treats in there and it doesn't really affect them all that much. But mm -hmm. one of the challenges with small dogs is uh, you give them even like a little small treat. And when I'm talking about giving a dog a treat I'm talking about something Tiny. this big yeah. uh, but even a handful of those on three or four pounds you're gonna fill that dog up and sometimes you can actually make it quite ill mm -hmm. so you have to be um, uh, work with treats more sparingly than you would with a larger dog sure. so you really need to turn on your charm and sometimes just taking the collar you take it from underneath their chin not over their head so it's not threatening mm -hmm. you can take that collar and give them a good scratch in the chest that's a really nice reward that just feels really good and you can talk to them and smile at them and go oh that oh you are just something else and I that, think Fizz enjoys this part he of does yeah. but it's like life is that simple yeah. it's it's it gives a, a good rapport and it, it starts to build already on the the bonding process you're in there nice and close you're doing something that feels good it's an alternative to food and they go you know what this is this is good now, when we talk about the big picture of puppy training, when we're talking about puppy training first steps, um, tell me a little bit about your mindset when you're uh, choosing things to do with your puppy. What do I want that dog to look like? How do I want it to behave as an adult dog? Mm -hmm. And then I want, it, I want that to be specific. I want it to have super high expectations and then I'm going to train to that level. And that's all on me, mm -hmm. okay? I'm not gonna expect the dog to guess what I want. I'm mm -hmm. gonna teach all of it. Um, and I wanna make sure it's fair to the dog. And by doing that, I want to um, know those, um, those, that list of expectations ahead of time so I can start training it right away. We talked about they learn right away. And a great example of that is if I don't want an adult dog jumping up on me, then I'm not going to let a puppy jump up on me because that's actually not fair to your dog. If you let them put their feet up at this stage when they're little, it's cute. Mm -hmm. They're small. Yeah. Um, you know, and some people even go so far as to bend down and touch the dog and reward them for that. So you're teaching a dog for weeks jump on me it's good mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden the tables turn and you're like get off right get off like the dog has no idea yep. how that changed mm -hmm. yep. and it did change for them and that's not fair so I want to go ahead of time I don't want a dog um, with putting their feet on on me well, I'm gonna start right away by if my puppy steps up I'm gonna gently put him on the ground Mm -hmm. and then I'm gonna reward for the feet on the ground. Yep. It takes a nanosecond for them to figure that out if you are consistent. Yep. They're like, nothing good comes of the feet up on their legs, really good stuff happens with my feet on the floor, and then I don't turn the table on them at any time. Now, Lori, when it comes to actual training for your puppy training first steps, what are some of the things that you are working on with Fizz right now? Um, well, we, we work on quite a, quite a few things because um, training's happening anyway. Yeah. You're, you're either controlling it or, or they're 
introducing it themselves yeah. and their ideas are often quite different than yours <laughs> right. um, so I, I start um, immediately like I said when I first brought him home and I had some toys on the living room floor and he went to see the fluffy slipper and yep. it, it was leave that not for dog here's a toy so that's training yeah um, managing him you know um, he has sharp little teeth he'll roll from playing with his toy roll over and go to sink them into the couch there's no way for him to understand one's acceptable and one isn't right so I'm right there to to move not for dog this is for this is for the toy so that's part of training mm -hmm. um, I try and optimize any type of behavior he might offer so if he's um, you know a few feet out in front of me and turns and walks towards me I'm gonna say to him here 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 um, and when he comes in nice and close to me I can give him a little food reward because I usually have something in my pocket or um, I can scratch his chest and tell him he's wonderful yeah and that's that's training natural training opportunities uh, you know dog trainers really understand taking advantage of natural training opportunities and I think that's a really really great one especially when you mention um, the small dogs might be a little hand shy you know we're really hovering over them when we bend over to pet and play and do these things so really rewarding every moment where they move in closer to us where we can more easily take control of them are such uh, you know of great value um, in the big picture of dog training for these small dogs yeah absolutely um, and and as we mentioned I have another dog I have um, a papillon who's who's he's a workaholic he works all the time and really likes training so um, I set Fizz up right right beside him I have the same expectations obviously he's learning but um, it's very easy to lure him into a sit and a down um, and a stand um, we have shake a paw roll over he learned all those things in the first week yeah and it's not because um, he's brilliant um, well I mean he he is brilliant. We can't say he is. He, he, he's, he's gifted. <laughs> yes. um, and he's he's quite eager. But but right away you're really capitalizing on the the value of training and it's fun. Yeah. Training's fun. Dogs like it. They want to hang out with you and engage with you. So um, yeah, you can get that going right away, and it lets you include your other dogs. And um, when you've got them both going like that, you're um, really establishing yourself. You're the leader. Mm -hmm. um, it's um, they're inter they're both interacting with you versus each other. So you're covering a lot of ground with a couple of pieces of freeze dried liver. Yes, absolutely. Which is of high value, as that's, we know. That's right. Yeah. Um, you mentioned briefly about uh, an introduction to your other dogs. Now I'm sure that's maybe not something that you did the first few days home, um, but in your case, maybe it was. And we talk a little bit in our uh, introducing your puppy to your other dogs video, which I'll link above about um, you know uh, when you make that first introduction you need to really understand uh, the uh, the energy and the um, socialization that the older dog has had as well because the last thing you want to do is put your new puppy beside a wild and crazy dog who loves to play with other dogs because it's going to be overwhelming for that puppy conversely if you have a wild and crazy puppy and you have a dog who uh, an older dog who's just not too sure uh, you know about other dogs you don't want to overwhelm that older dog either so there's a balance there talk a little bit about how you introduced fizz to your other dog um, well I introduced him right away just because of the, the way that I live um, so I introduced them outside I had both dogs on a line mm -hmm. um, now my little papillon dash he's, he's um, really sort of indifferent he's not wild about playing with other dogs he's wild about playing yes um, yeah. so he's very invested in me and um, it was a little bit unfortunate that I brought that puppy home but he could work around it right, right. Uh, and then when we went inside um, Dash found some toys that were on the floor and uh, he stockpiled them and then stood in front of them and said you know to, to you know the idea was for the puppy um, okay you're in here but this is all my stuff mm -hmm. and so I you know had to remind Dash actually it's, it's all my stuff right, right. Um, and we're gonna share them yeah you, you have yours he, he he's not gonna be allowed to come and take anything you're using but he is going to be allowed to use things that you're not using sharesies yes right. um, and I uh, have a lot of control over that yeah I have everybody on a line. I'm quite clear that all the toys are mine. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you saw them, you'd understand they're great they toys. They sound like really nice toys, yeah. <laughs> I know, you want some. <laughs> so, so right away, um, they all sort of understand. Again, I I'm the leader. Mm -hmm. Everybody's safe. Mm -hmm. Everybody has some space. Yep. Um, and I'm going to manage things really closely. I don't want Dash overwhelming 
the puppy um, and explaining it on his terms how it works yep. and I don't want the puppy going oh look they've already supplied something that's sort of small and fluffy right yes, yeah, <laughs> because yeah. yeah that looks very tempting to a puppy when you have like a papillon tail you ever seen those yes I have yeah. yes uh, puts yeah. this thing to shame it's way more it's exciting it's not nearly as exciting absolutely and it, right. this doesn't run down the hallway that's that's so, exactly yeah, it's a it so lot, lots of management and lots of very gentle reminders that I've got this everybody and it's actually going to go my way yeah and I think uh, an important element of that is we talked right at the top of the video a little bit about management so when you aren't able to be there and um, you know supervise the experience uh, Fizz can go into his crate and have a nap you know and, and, and relax a little bit because you've got things to do you have a you know a life to live so many things to do yes absolutely yeah I, I put my dog in a crate a lot of times mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes for five minutes sometimes for a half hour sometimes I walk outside and pretend I didn't get a puppy it's <laughs> yes. very refreshing yeah the puppy Ooh. the puppy trading <laughs> challenge can feel a little bit overwhelming sometimes you know it can seem like a lot and that's really one of the benefits of having a crate because your puppy needs a rest your puppy needs to go in and just have some time on their own as well but so do you because you want to be engaged you want to be enjoying the process and you want that puppy to um, think uh, that you know sun shines out of your ears so to speak much better place for it to shine mm -hmm. yes. now when we talk about some puppy training first steps how does our um, new puppy owner get prepared or be prepared for when they bring that puppy home um, I think having a, a crate um, uh, now I go crate overboard okay. um, I have uh, I have a crate that I put for nighttime right beside my bed so if I have a new puppy, that can be a little stressful for them. They miss their litter baits mm -hmm. and they're somewhere new. Uh, and then I like to have a crate. Um, I borrow them. There's usually tons around. If you put word out, you've got a puppy, you need crates. Um, I have one in my kitchen mm -hmm. so that um, if I'm doing something, I can pop the puppy in the kitchen. Um, if I eat dinner, I put the puppy in a crate so I can enjoy my food. It also gets them used to the idea that um, dinner time's not really your business. You can go lie down. Basically, <laughs> I put them anywhere I hang out so yeah. uh, that I can put the puppy in there right away and and manage the puppy very closely like yeah. I'm a micro puppy manager yes they're on a line they're in a crate they're on a line they're in a crate I do my very best to make sure they don't rehearse any behavior I don't want yeah and I think that's really important because it sets them up to be successful the last thing you want to be doing is no get out of there oh no you can't do that you want them to be having a really great experience with you so by uh, managing your puppy really well and I know you mentioned uh, that you have a couple of crates around your uh, home that's so important and a lot of people that um, have struggled with maybe barking in a crate overnight or just generally, uh, you know, barking their puppy or dog barking in their crate when they go to work. Part of it could be because that puppy has only ever experienced the crate when they leave for work or overnight. You know, taking these moments during the day when your puppy, you know, puppies love to nap. When your puppy does need a rest, using the crate for that, uh, puppy's having a nap right now, using the crate to your advantage. Uh, in those, it up a bit. Anyway. Yeah, I know. <laughs> in those instances, can be really, really helpful and um, speed up your puppy learning process that uh, the crate is a really great thing. Yeah, absolutely. And you can, you know, be ahead of yourself a little bit too and give them something that's safe for them to chew on in that crate. So yeah. they are automatically distracted and rewarded at the same time. So it makes it a little more pleasant for everybody. Now I've put a playlist together with more puppy training videos and if you'd like to check that out, click that card right there. I'd like to thank instructor Lori and her adorable puppy named Fizz for joining us today and talking all about your puppy training first steps. On that note, I'm Ken, this is Lori. Happy training!